Hello everyone and welcome back to the Velocity Channel where this is your bridge to financial freedom. We want to go ahead and make sure that you are getting rid of, paying off, eliminating the most cash flow sucking loan that you could have and that is your auto loan. Now listen, it doesn't matter if it's a car, a truck, a van. Listen, we've got to get rid of those loans, okay, so that we could capture that cash flow. We want to show you how to do it in a quicker way, and this time it's going to be a little different, okay? We have some different numbers here, but it is relevant to your situation. Before we get into that, like, share, and subscribe so that people all around the world can know just how powerful Velocity Banking is. And listen, it's been here the whole time. Okay, <clears throat> as with any episode, we want to start out from the beginning so that you can comprehend this, okay? So we're going to be starting with our line of credit. We've started with, let's just say, $10,000 at 21%. Now, keep in mind that your numbers may be a little different. They may be a little higher. They may be a little lower. However, the principle of what we're going to teach is what you need to comprehend, okay? $400 each month, you've got a cash flow of $2,000. Now, our loan is $40,000 at 15% and the car dealership or the financial gurus, the bank wants you to pay $951 each and every month and they're going to lock you into a five-year time period and this is the amortization of this loan. So this is what we want to do. We want to take the complex and we want to simplify it. Let's just say you've got $5,000 okay, that comes into your bank account and you have $3,000 that goes out. But it really wouldn't matter if you had $4,000 that came into your bank account and $2,000 went out. Why? Because it's not necessarily all about what you make. It's not even about what you keep. It's all about where this cash flow is parked. Shout out to Finney, all right? He gave me that one. So with that, we want to make sure that whatever line of credit balance that we have, <clears throat> we wanna make sure that we're paying that down so that we can use our line of credit as a tool to eliminate these pesky cash flow sucking loans. So let's just say we have the balance of $10,000. Okay, and for easy math, we're going to go ahead and put it up here. Why? Because in order to see how long it takes you to line, takes you to eliminate that balance on the line of credit, we've got to use this formula. And that is, <clears throat> we've got to take the line balance and divide it by the cash flow. So the line balance is $10,000. We're going to divide it by $2,000. That's our cash flow or how much is being parked right there in the line of credit because we are using our line of credit as our checking account. Whereas before, we used our checking account as our checking account. We allowed our income to go in, the expenses to go out. This time, we are paying our line of credit with our full income. So let's say the $5,000 is going in, the $3,000 is going out in our expenses, and that $2,000 is getting parked right there, that is what is paying off that line of credit. And so, as you can see, we take out the zeros in the numerator and the denominator, and we're left with 10 divided by 2, which equals 5. So that's going to take 5 months to pay off $10,000 with our current cash flow. Why is that important? We're about to see why that's important right now. So let's take a look at our loan. Our loan is $40,000 and 15%. Now you've got to know that some people think this is pretty high. And perhaps those with better credit scores, they kind of look down on those with 15% and higher interest rates. But I want to include, uh, include this statement. And that is, did you know that you're gonna be paying off your car much faster than those that follow the bank's plan and have an 800 credit score, have a 790 credit score. You're going to be paying this off much faster and you're going to be capturing that $951 of cash flow and including it in your cash flow down here. How is that possible? Well, let's look at it, okay? 
If you're going to be looking at this amortization table, you've got to keep in mind that this is the bank's plan for your life. They want you to pay up into year five. And they want to capture all of that interest that they are charging you. Because each and every month you pay, right, the $951, $951 is divided up. And it's divided up in between interest and principal. And at the beginning, you know who's going to get most of that money? That's right, the bank. So the bank at the beginning, $500 interest, principal $451. Now, at month 19, guess what? It's looking much better. $386 to interest, $564 to the principal, and on and on it goes. But we don't want to spend our lives, five years of our lives, paying someone else $951. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we're taking our stagnant $10,000 and we are deploying it towards this balance. Why? Because the smaller the principal, the smaller the interest. The smaller the principal, the smaller the interest. Why? Because the principal is the host that the interest is a parasite on. Okay? So each time you look at this number, I want you to keep this in mind. The first time you go to the dealership, you should be writing out a check or making a transaction with that check card, that line of credit check card of $10,000 and saying, I want it placed to the principal. Why? Because when you do that, you automatically jump to 19 months. You just jumped ahead of time. They should make a movie about you because you just collapsed time. You came down here to the $30,382 mark where you're paying less in interest and that payment that you're making, that $951 that you're making anymore, like look at this, it's actually going towards, more towards that principle, okay? Now, of course, it's gonna take how many months to replenish that $10,000? It's gonna take you five months, okay? So let's go ahead and count it, five months. And we can deploy another $10,000, all right? So now you're at the $20,323 mark, right? Now you're paying way less in interest. And look, if you were still on the bank's plan, you would be at month 35, but you're not on month 35. What month are you on? Well, remember, it took another five months to get that $10,000, right? To deploy it. So you're actually at five, 10, 10 months, okay? Now, you want to say, okay, another five months has passed, okay, and I want to deploy another $10,000. Okay, well, that's good because now you're at the $10,542 mark. Look at how much is going towards interest, but look at if you were on the bank's plan, you would be in your fourth year, but you're not on the bank's plan. You're on the better plan, okay? So now you're at five, 10, 15, I feel like a schoolhouse rock cartoon. 5, 10, 15 months, and of course another, right, five months goes by, right? So now you can take that $10,000 that has been replenished and just hammer the principal again, and you no longer have to worry about a 60 month or a five year loan because you're out in 5, 10, 15, 20 months. So we can go ahead and erase the five year. Okay? It's 20 months. Folks, years literally turn into months with velocity banking when you know how to do velocity banking. Now, a word on that. A word on that. Because I want you to know what all this entails. So this 15%, I want to explain something to you. This 15% only applies to those that don't know how to apply velocity banking to their finances. This applies to the people that would rather go on the bank's plan. See, this is the 15% that we're talking about. Velocity bankers will never pay this amount right here. 
It doesn't matter if it's a mortgage, if it's a car loan, any loan. It's not going to be that when you are implementing velocity banking. Matter of fact, as we paid it off in 40, excuse me, in 20 months, guess what? This $951 now belongs to us, all right? So now we are at $2,951 each and every month paying our line of credit down. We're using our lines of credit and our loans to now build assets, not just consumables anymore. So that our assets can buy the consumables, so that our assets can buy and purchase those expenses. Does that make sense? So this is what we want you to realize. This number is just a number. It's not about the interest rate. It's all about time and balance. And how you allocate time and the balance is going to make all the difference in the world. If you have any questions on anything that we went over or perhaps you have finally found uh, some, some revelation and you said, you know what, I need the class, I need my own, not only class, but a velocity banking debt elimination plan myself, I'm happy to help you out. Don't worry about it. We have your back. We also have a new bundle. So if you're new to this whole velocity banking thing, we can get you up and started even into investing as well, okay? Listen, folks, please don't be a victim of the bank. Be the bank. God bless you and you take care.